it's been kind of a sad week for Star Trek because we have lost not three but four uh, different people connected with the shows, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Hello out there, I'm the Oldest Nerd. Uh, in the last few days, uh, we have been saddened by the death of René Auberginois, who played Odo in Deep Space Nine. He was also a stage actor and uh, a nice guy from all accounts, and uh, he will be sadly missed. He was 79. Also 79 was Robert Walker. He was the original Charlie X, a teenager who had um, extra human powers, and didn't know quite how to control them. He lived to be also 79. And then uh, the husband of Marina Sirtis, Michael Lamper, uh, also uh, passed away. He was 61, two years younger than I am, too young. We hope that all the family of all of those people uh, are uh, all right. Um, and um, also, D.C. Fontana, Dorothy Catherine Fontana, who was for a long time credited as the script consultant in the original series. She started out as a secretary to Samuel Peoples, who um, uh, moved to uh, Desilu Studios about the time that Star Trek was coming into um, its production. And she eventually um, uh, became secretary to Gene Roddenberry. Uh, he found that she had a flair for writing, something that she had done uh, earlier and uh, and uh, found that uh, she did have some good ideas and so made uh, good use of her, made her the um, script editor for uh, the first season or since about the middle of the first season. She ended up writing about 10 episodes in the original series and uh, as script editor probably also rewrote many of the shows. Uh, she was uh, mostly credited with um, Journey to Babel, and uh, in which uh, she was able to flesh out the character of Spock by introducing Spock's parents, the Vulcan ambassador Sarek and his mother Amanda Grayson. Uh, this uh, was about as far as you could go in the 60s, and uh, when they uh, characterized Amanda more recently. Uh, she was very approving of that. Uh, one of her big things was in developing characters, and so uh, much of the character development in the original series and even in subsequent series had to do with her, and uh, did do um, City on the Edge of Forever. Uh, now, Harlan Ellison famously wrote that, the original draft of it, but uh, she came in and made it more a story about people, and uh, that was what she did. She said, science fiction elements are not interesting. When you make a story about people, it's always something that will last. Uh, she was later one of the executive producers on the Star Trek animated series and did kind of a follow-up to the city on the edge of forever in which we have some more backstory about Spock's childhood, which has since been picked up in movies and uh, also in Discovery series. She'd written for other shows, westerns, uh, cop shows, things like this. Uh, but uh, notably, uh, she also wrote for Buck Rogers, so I guess there's no accounting for taste. But uh, she did write uh, the um, a few episodes uh, uncredited uh, or credited to a pseudonym for The Next Generation, and she wrote almost everything in Encounter in Farpoint except for the Q character, which Roddenberry wrote. Roddenberry got the credit for writing the episode, but just about all of the relationships between Picard and Beverly, between um, uh, Deanna and Riker, uh, Jordy and Data and Wesley and all of these were basically DC Fontana's doing in making these characters something that you can relate to. And, and a great deal of Picard's personality comes as a credit to uh, how she originally outlined his character from the very beginning of The Next Generation. She didn't last very long in The Next Generation. There was a falling out uh, with Roddenberry, and uh, uh, she didn't do anything for him after that, but uh, did come back and uh, do an episode of Deep Space Nine in which they, it was the episode entitled Dax, which uh, we get a more 
complete idea of what Dax was about. And um, she also wrote some of the uh, fan films, the uh, Star Trek Continues uh, series specifically. Um, the uh, It was the one uh, Walter Koenig plays an older version of Chekhov in. Dorothy Fontana probably was one of the three most influential people in the early days of Star Trek and the early days of the next generation next to Roddenberry himself and Gene Kuhn who came up with the idea of the Klingons and the Prime Directive and the Federation and uh, Dorothy Fontana was the person who came up with the idea of why Spock was like he was and why that was an important element to have Kirk and Spock and McCoy be this this close friendship between the three of them, that was Dorothy Fontana's doing, and that was her doing through much of the series credited and uncredited. So uh, we tip our hats in tribute to DC Fontana. Uh, without her, Star Trek would have been a completely different kind of show, and we would have all been the poorer for it. So uh, we'll have something of um, more happy notes uh, in our next video which come very soon uh, we're doing a couple of videos at once here so that we can uh, get in some of the things that are happening this week so the next one will be on the new uh, doctor who season so we hope that you'll uh, look for that one as well but uh, in the meantime with sympathy to the families of all of these people renee obergenois robert walker michael lamper and dc fontana don't go far